My name is Brendan Fay. I'm an Irish immigrant living in New York. And I'm very grateful to be participating in this 20th anniversary gathering here under the AIDS Memorial in Greenwich Village. And that I'm very moved by the story of the kitchen workers on the top of the World Trade Center. This is the first time I've ever heard time being given to tell their story. New Yorkers are very rightfully so respectful and in awe and tell the stories of the firefighters, the first responders. But rarely do we pause to remember those kitchen workers. And so I was very moved by it. On September 11th, I'm, I'm actually here. I've been holding the image of my good friend, Father Michael Judge who was chaplain to the New York City Fire Department, who died on that day. In fact, he's listed as number one victim, of course. What does that mean, you know? Um, the uh, numbers, I'm more interested in their names, their stories of each person. And uh, so, and it's fascinating that in a way, the city is still wounded, carries inside the pain, the anguish, the unacknowledged grief from that time and since even perhaps. Um, we've lived with the consequences and we heard a little bit about that as well. You know, the recent ending of that unending war in Afghanistan and elsewhere. Um, on September 11th itself, of course, like today, a gorgeous blue, blue skies and, you know, and, and it was election day in the city and, um, I actually live in Astoria, Queens, and um, I was out for an early run in the park, more a jog, and on the way back I would always give myself like a little reward for doing a good jog with a roll and a cup of good New York coffee at the little Italian bakery um, near where we live. And so I had that, and then was heading back to the house when I noticed a crowd gathered outside the electronic store, the electronic shop on 31st Street. And they're all like sort of like staring through the window. Because you have to remember it wasn't yet nine o'clock. So the, the stores were closed. But there was a crowd already gathered, looking, staring. In Ireland, we tend to use the word gobsmacked. That's what they look like. That they were completely gobsmacked at the sight. And um, the, uh, and that's, we all just stared at the smoke and the North Tower and that had been struck by a plane. And then of course there was the second, second plane. I ran home to my house. My, my spouse Tom was actually due to fly home that day to Illinois, to Brimfield, Illinois, to visit his mother. Um, canceled. All flights were canceled. But he did get a call from his hospital. Lincoln Hospital, where he worked as pediatric hematologist, oncologist with children with cancer and sickle cell. And Tom, like every medical personnel in New York City, ran and went to whatever hospital they believed that they could help. And all expecting ambulances full of patients and people to be brought. And of course, that never happened, you know. Um, I felt lost, actually, that day. I didn't know what to do. I was very frustrated to, looking at television, looking at the smoke, even from Queens. And I came down at one point to Union Square and where people were gathering. And um, then I went to visit a friend of mine in the hospital. And I went back home that evening after visiting her down here at Rusk uh, Rehab. And, and I went back home and my machine those days, that was the, the answering machine was blinking, you know, multiple times, you know, these red flashes. And I began to play the messages. And that's when I heard our friend, Father Michael Judge, was among those who died. Um, I just played one message after the other, after the other, after the other. And it's as if, and then of course it came home, it all became very personal. It was not what was happening to somebody else. And, um, and then eventually later on, my partner Tom 
came back and came in through the back door and we just put our arms around each other and we just bawled and we just bawled and cried. And it was like at that moment began imagining our world without our beautiful friend, Father Michael Judge, who was so beloved in this city, you know, among the city's homeless. Um, the, the political leaders were, knew him very well and, and he was such a beloved chaplain to the New York City Fire Department. And that image of him being carried out, you know, by first responders on the chair went all around the world as one of those iconic images from that day. That's, I went to bed that night realizing our lives and our world would never be the same again. I have to say as well, my, our answering machine was also full of messages from Ireland. People started calling, actually even from around the world. Are you all right? Are you all okay? We're seeing these images from New York. And that's when I realized in a way, the world would become New York. The world would wrap its heart and arms around our city to hold us in our grief and pain and suffering and tears. And, and that's really is what I remember from those days. And then of course we went to the wake, the funeral. And a month after September 11, I would organize a gathering not too far from here at General Theological Seminary on 9th Avenue and invite New Yorkers to come and tell their stories about Father Michael Judge, which they did. And they opened our hearts and we we're all moved and, you know, by the stories. And now actually I, I've filmed that, that I did one already called Saint of Non-11 co-produced and now I have another one coming out remembering Michael. But, um, Thanks very much. Thank you for helping to coordinate this remembrance 20 years after. I hope our public schools in New York City can find a way to tell the stories and to help each other. I was already interviewed yesterday. I was very frustrated. People talking about the military and revenge. And while I am a lot more interested in how can we tell these stories to help us to become more human with each other um, in our city? Because that's New York. Michael Judge loved New York. He would talk about being the son of immigrants from County Leitrim in Ireland. And he had a soft spot for immigrants. He always saw New York as a city hospitable to immigrants. Sadly, I think a little bit of that spirit was lost we need to find it again and hold it close and press hard against any prejudice that wants to get in our way, you know? So if anything we can learn from 9-11 is Michael Judge would say, be tender with each other because that's who he was. And all those who went down and drove down and went up those stairs, you know, were there to help and rescue and save, you know? In a way that's what we do every day.